In the vise, I've got a Colt pistol I just finished building. This was a full build with all new components. Now I'm ready for the final part of trigger tuning, and then I'm going to test fire this for about 75 rounds. Then I'm going to clean it, degrease it, sand it, sandblast it, glass bead blast it, polish these flats, then I'll blue it, then I'll assemble it, lubricate it, and I'll test fire it again for another 25 or 30 rounds. Then this will be ready for the customer. What I'm going to do now is tune the springs. At this point, I've already finished cutting the hammer hooks to a height of 22 thousandths. Um, I had a special cutter, an end mill that I spin on the Bridgeport mill. I spin it at about 3,000 RPM. The cutter is a five flute carbide cutter that is ground at 89 and a half degrees. The purpose for that cutter was to ensure that I had hammer hooks that were at least square or a half a degree under square. I've already prepped the Sears primary and breakaway angle and I've finished all the necessary polishing and prepping of the disconnect, the trigger, the sear legs. Uh, the frame has been prepared. I've measured the dimensions of all the parts and ensured the final fitting of the parts involved. After I tune the springs, I'm going to adjust the over travel and take up of our trigger. Now I cut the hammer hooks to a conservative 22 thousandths for pistols that are used for defensive or carry purposes. It's my view and opinion that the possibility of accidental discharge is too great when you factor in the human condition and possible you know, high stress scenario with the finger on the trigger and nerves running high or even cumulative factors over time that can lead to potential hammer follow with hooks that are cut too short. Um, I understand that some gunsmiths competently and safely tune triggers with hooks cut less than 22 thousandths and adjust the weight of the trigger through the springs and so on. However, I'm able to tune pretty easily a trigger to a very crisp and safe and very reliable four and a half pounds. My triggers are going to break like a glass rod and they don't have any creep in them. So for me, it's, it's unnecessary to bring those hooks to any lower height than 22 thousandths to achieve that. You know, that said, on John Browning's original design, the hammer hooks were about 30 thousandths tall and they were slightly under square. And that was a captive engagement. Now, with modern machining practices, high tolerances on your parts and the quality of those parts, it isn't necessary to have hooks that high. Now, when you fire the pistol, the recoil is violent and the hammer and sear do disengage slightly. Now what happens is when the slide cycles to the rear, it overcocks the hammer. It's going to slam this into the grip safety. The hammer then bounces off the grip safety and is forced back by the mainspring, but it's going to be held by the slide. Next what happens is the slide's recoil spring slams the slide back to battery, and the hammer will again fall slightly, but this time it's going to be caught by the sear's full cock ledge. Now a light sear spring won't keep that sear rotated into engagement quick enough and can cause the sear to miss that full cock ledge and the hammer will follow down. Now assuming the sear spring isn't too light, the sear will catch the half cock notch, but hammer hooks that have been cut too short can actually make this more likely to happen. Okay, now being that the slide is now slammed forward, that energy created will cause the hammer and sear once again to try to disengage from each other. Now if you have a light mainspring or a light sear spring, that break in contact potential is higher and hammer follow down is more likely. A strong mainspring is vital as well as proper tuning of the sear spring and the disconnect spring is also highly important. Alright, talking about the trigger now, when the pistol is being loaded or reloaded, the trigger is connected to the sear via the disconnect and that jerking energy created when the slide chambers around and snaps forward, it's going to cause the trigger and bow to move slightly and bump the sear and rotate it out of engagement. Now if the hammer hooks are short and the sear springs or mainspring is lightened, the sear can be bumped out of contact with the hooks and the hammer will follow. Now if the sear spring isn't too light, it'll rotate the sear back into contact for it to catch on the half cock notch and prevent a possible slam fire. 
Now during the firing cycle this whole event changes because the trigger is being held to the rear by the shooter's finger and the disconnect is recessed and moved out of contact with the sear and the trigger bow can't contact the sear via the disconnect so there's no worry then. Okay next I'm going to begin tuning the leaf spring. What I've got here is a classic three leaf spring. On the left is the sear spring, in the middle is the disconnect spring, and on the right is the grip safety. Now the middle disconnect spring also acts as the trigger return spring. I'm going to be tuning these individually, but I'm going to start with the disconnect. Okay, I've got about a pound and a half. I'm going to take a little off of that and bring it down to about a pound and a quarter. Okay, I've got about a pound and a quarter. Next I'll be doing the sear spring and I'm going to be looking at the difference between the sear and the disconnect spring. Okay, I've got about three and a half pounds. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Okay, I've got about three and a quarter pounds minus the one and a quarter pounds for the disconnect. We're looking at about two pounds on the sear spring. Next what I'll do is I'll finish assembling the grip safety and test the full weight of all the springs on our trigger pull and see where we come in at. If necessary we can go back and recheck our sear and disconnect spring. What I'm looking for when I'm done is about a four and a half pound trigger pull. A very clean brake and then I'll adjust the over travel and take up on our trigger. Okay now I've got the pistol assembled which gives us full power on our springs and I'm going to check the trigger pull once again. Okay we are at about four and a half to four and three quarter pounds. Okay, we are about four and a half, four and three quarter pounds. I'm going to leave it right here. After I test fire this for about 75 rounds, I'm going to clean it, degrease it, sandblast it, bead blast it, polish the flats, and blue it. After that, I'm going to lubricate it, reassemble it. I'll test fire it again for another 25 rounds or so. By that time, the trigger will actually lighten itself up. Usually, between an eighth to a quarter of a pound is not uncommon. Um, at which point I'll recheck the trigger pull and if necessary adjust the springs till I have exactly four and a half pounds.